Hello, welcome to this introduction slides to the ataxic data analysis. Before um, re watching this video, uh, it would be better to follow the introduction to galaxy analysis tutorials, but also the sequence analysis, quality control and mapping tutorials. Today, I'm going to answer these questions. What is ataxic? What are the quality parameters that you need to check for each data set that you have? And also how to analyze your ataxic data. So the goal is to understand ataxic, understand the quality parameters, but also the peak coding, which is quite specific to this technique. So ataxic um, is designed to identify in the, in the genome the region that are accessible. What does that mean? So in the nucleus, the DNA is wrapped around nucleosomes. In some places, although the nucleosomes are very compact and all the DNA is wrapped around it. This is what we call closed chromatin. In other regions, um, the distance between nucleosomes is larger and then you have free DNA in between. This is very important in epigenetics because this is where you have, for example, your transcription star site for the genes that you're going to transcribe, but also where you have transcription factors that can bind and then promote the transcription of other genes, uh, like distal enhancers, for example. So in order to, uh, be, to be able to to, to know which are the regions in your genome that are accessible, uh, the ataxic uses uh, TN5 transposase. So the transposase is a protein that is able to bind to DNA and to is insert a piece of DNA that is foreign to this genome. This TN5 transposase has been modified. It has been, um, uh, it's now more active and this is this uh, version, the more active version that uh, we are going to use in ataxic. So what will happen is that uh, when the TN5 transposase enter into the nucleus, it will be able to bind and to put uh, the two DNA fragments that were bound to it in the open chromatin regions. So in the DNA that was not wrapped around nucleosome. Then what you do is that you purify your DNA, so you remove all the nucleosome and the transposase, and then you amplify through PCR cycles um, using some um, barcoded primers. So in fact, the TN5 has been modified to, to bring with it uh, two adapters, two Illumina adapters, and then we are going to use PCR primers that are barcoded to amplify, and this would be directly the library, so it will be compatible for sequencing in Illumina machine. <clears throat> the use of barcoded primers allow to be able to sequence together different samples. So typically, uh, if you want to do an ataxic experiment, we would recommend to have at least two biological replicates. Uh, then uh, for the control, it depends on the situation. Uh, if you're using um, a, a real uh, a tissue uh, from, for example, a mouse, then you don't really need a control. But if you're using a cell line and you don't know the copy number, uh, it, it would require to have a control. Because if you have a cell line that have, for example, a region that is amplified, if you don't know that it's amplified and you run your ataxic, you will not be able to know if the pileup that you see on this region is due to the amplification in the cell line or to the fact that it was highly accessible. So if you need a control, uh, the control would be a purified DNA, so a naked DNA, you remove all the nucleosomes, and then you just use the TN5 to, to cut and to insert the adapters everywhere randomly on your genome. And then you should have something that will cover the genome that corresponds to the copy number. Usually we use paired end sequencing for the ataxic. Um, there are two reasons for that. The first reason is that if you do paired end, you know the fragment length. So uh, as you may have seen on the previous slide, you have different types of fragments. You have fragments like this uh, that uh, are 
depleted of nucleosome. They are nucleosome free fragments. And then you have fragments like this, which are fragments that were in fact burying your nucleosome. But when you sequence, you, don't, you can't really distinguish, except that the DNA wrapping an, around the nucleosome is 150 base pairs. So if you, the fragment size is smaller than 150 base pair, you're sure that it's nucleosome free region. However, this is something that we don't cover uh, in the actual training uh, on ATAXIC currently. Another reason why we should use pedant is because um, as we use PCR to amplify the library, it's difficult to distinguish between a real duplicated events. So that means that uh, you have a fragment that you sequence that is twice the same because it's coming from two different cells, or you have fragments that are identical just because they have been amplified by PCR, twice the same fragment. So if you have paired and data, you can distinguish between the fragment that have the two pairs that are exactly at the same place, and the one that have one at the same place, the other one not at the same place. While if you have only single rate, then you won't be able to distinguish between them. And to be conservative, you would remove one of them, so you may decrease um, the, the, the pileup at this region. So that's why we would recommend to use pendant. So how to analyze your data? Um, there are different uh, quality controls that you can do. The first one, you can even do it before sequencing, it's to run a fragment analyzer to see what would be the size of the, uh, the insert. So what is, what is the size of your fragments? Um, be careful when you do a fragment analyzer, you need to add the size of the adapters. Uh, here, what I'm showing you is just the size of the insert size after sequencing. So it's slightly biased to the, to the short fragments, <coughs> but still it gives you a, an idea of, of uh, what you are supposed to see. So the majority of your fragments should be very small. Um, so it should be around 50 base pair. So in fact, if you have two DNA, two transposes that's bound to DNA, very close, stick one to the other, they will insert your Illumina adapters and the distance between the two Illumina adapters will be around 50 base pair. And this corresponds to the shorter size of fragment that you can have. And you can see that you have quite a lot of them. So that means that the TN5 was either stuck or just slightly separated. Then you have another population, another band that corresponds to 200 base pair. And in fact, this corresponds to the, the situation where you have one nucleosome where DNA is wrapped around it. So I said it's 150 base pair. And then you have two TN5 that cut just stuck to the nucleosome. Uh, this is a 200 base pair. You can see also the 400 and 600 corresponding to two nucleosome bound or three nucleosome that are stick one to the other. Um, the TN5, so the transposase initially uh, is uh, coming from bacteria and it's, uh, a tran it's, it's uh, moving a transposant from place to place and it recognizes a strong um, uh, nucleotide sequence. Uh, with the modification of the TN5, the, the nucleotide bias is reduced, but still it's high. And um, that's why when you do a fast QC analysis on your uh, uh, reads, you may see this type of profile, so where you see a strong uh, nucleotide bias. Still, uh, we have we managed to have coverage roughly everywhere on the genome, so this is a bias, but it's not just 100% of the sequence that are identical. Um, as in different uh, next generation sequencing analysis, we will do some filters uh, after the mapping. So first we will filter for the uniquely mapped reads. This is because uh, if, we, if we look at a region that is repetitive, you may have a lot of reads that pile up just because it's repetitive and you don't want to have artificial pile up. So we would remove just um, all the reads that's mapped to different locations. Uh, we will also remove the read that map to mitochondrial DNA. And this is quite specific to ATAXIC. The, D, the mitochondrial DNA is like a bacterial DNA. So it's super coiled, but there is no nucleosome. So when the TN5 access to this DNA, it will just cut everywhere. 
So depending on your tissue or your sample, you may have different amount of mitochondrial reads. And uh, this, if you don't remove them, this may influence your normalization uh, or your big calling. So we would recommend to, to remove them. In addition, they're not interesting because uh, as I said, all the mitochondrial genome is accessible. Uh, finally, we will remove the PCR duplicate. So as I said before, if we have patent, we will use the patent information and uh, we will discriminate between uh, the, the, the PCR duplicates that come from the same fragment. So to, <clears throat> at the end, what you want to know is which region of your genome are accessible. And uh, to do this, you will do statistics and you will use a peak coder. So it's a, a software that will analyze your data and tell you what are the regions that are significantly enriched in coverage. So in fact, what I didn't talk about is that when the TN fine bound to the DNA, it will insert your, your Illumina adapters, but not uh, exactly at the, bound, the place where it bound but just nine base per separated. So one on each uh, DNA strand. And the distance between the two insertion is nine base pair. So that means that if you really want to know where the TN5 bound, you need to add five to one and four to the other, um, remove four to the, to the coordinates to be able to find uh, the actual position of the TN5. So ideally, if you're interested in footprinting, you would like to have a peak coder that would take this into account. Uh, however, most of the time, we don't have the resolution to go to this. And uh, so we will just use uh, Max2, which uh, is not designed for this nine base pair duplication, but it's really not a problem because we don't have this resolution. Finally, um, as I said before, you have two types of fragments. So uh, you have fragments that are like this, that are nucleosome free, but you also have fragments that are like this. And in fact, the whole fragment <laughs> is covered by a nucleosome. So if you do a, a regular genome coverage or a user, uh, the default parameters for peak color, you may find in fact the coverage on the nucleosome instead of finding the coverage in between nucleosomes. So, what is important is to identify the region where the TN5 bound. So you need to focus on the five prime of the reads, not the reads itself, neither the wall fragment, but just the five prime of the reads. So to do that, we will use max2, but we will adapt the parameters in order to center the coverage on the five prime of the reads. Finally, here is an overview of uh, the workflow that you're going to follow if you, if you go to the training material with the hands-on on the ataxic analysis. So we start with the parent uh, data set, so R1 and R2. And uh, as I said, you can have very, very short fragments like 50 base pair. So if you sequence more than 50 base pair, what will happen is that the R1, for example, will read your fragment, but then will come to your adapter of the R2. So you need to remove this part to be able to map correctly. So we use cutadapt to remove the adapters. And then on the trimmed reads, we will run the botai 2 to map in end-to-end -end mode. Um, then we will do the filtering, as I said, so uniquely map, remove the chromosome mitochondria. We remove the adapters with the PCAR tools, uh, MAC duplicates. And finally, we do the, Mac, the peak calling with MAX2 with specific parameters. And this will give you two files. First, the coverage. So um, at each position, what is the coverage? And this will uh, allow you to see the height of each peak, et cetera. And then a list of peaks, so the region that are significantly um, covered. And this would correspond to your accessible region. In order to display this data, we will have two approaches, one which is genome-wide. Um, uh, with deep tools, we will do a heat map. So we will just pile up all the coverage on specific region. We will choose the transcription start site. And we also have a locus-specific approach. 
using file genome tracks. <coughs> so th that will allow us to have a screenshot of what's happening on a specific locus. So how are the, the width coverage, where are the peaks, uh, where are the transcription star sites in this region, and we will also compare to uh, other annotations. With that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I hope you will enjoy and follow the Galaxy Training Material Associated to it with the hands-on.